You don't just find them in pear trees, and there's no shortage of them in North Dakota. Mike Anderson finds out why there are so many partridges on the landscape. If you're an upland game bird hunter in North Dakota, you likely refer to these non-native birds as Huns or Hungarian partridge. In the science world, they have a different handle. Scientifically, they're called gray partridge, but the common name and kind of the popular name is, is Hungarian partridge, or like people like to call Huns. Um, the first ones that came to North America came from Hungary, uh, so that's, that's where the Hungarian partridge comes from. Gray partridge are cyclic birds, and their numbers have been up for a few years now. They thrive during drought conditions when you have a lot of patchy weeds in fields and insects like grasshoppers to eat. Even though we tied an all-time high from our brood surveys from this year to 1992, we won't come close to harvesting 220,000 again, mainly because the limit was five back then, it's three now, and then just access, you know, back then, basically, you know, there weren't too many posted signs. A colorful bird, partridge are smaller than the ring-neck pheasant and the sharp-tailed grouse. You know, they got really colorful chestnut face. Uh, their fan is really beautiful you know, later in the year. Uh, the tips are really chestnut. Um, the bellies are nice gray, um, sometimes a little bit whiter in females. You know, they're just, they have very colorful wings. Gray partridge were introduced in North Dakota by the Game and Fish Department in the early 1920s. In North Dakota, the first documented that the Game and Fish releases were in 1923. We got 100 breeding pair from Czechoslovakia. Um, and they released those the following year, 1924, and they did around 7,500 the next, you know, 10, 15 years. Once partridge numbers got to a sustainable level, the department opened a hunting season. Mid-1930s, we did open season. Uh, it was only open for a couple days. That was the first hunting season. Closed for a while, and then in the 50s is when it really opened up. Gross says to enjoy these colorful birds now, as numbers will eventually go down. This is Mike Anderson in the North Dakota Outdoors.